Hi everybody, welcome back to Victory Gardens by Rain. I am Rain and today I am very excited to introduce you to my greenhouse. So we got it set up and um, it's not perfect. I don't love the way it's set up. I, I'm discovering some things as I uh, get more familiar with the lay of the land here. Um, if you didn't know, we are new here. This is our new home and it's gonna be our new homestead. Uh, so I am, We've only been here since November and it is February the 6th today. So I'm still very much learning the land. Uh, but today I'm gonna show you what I did with the greenhouse. If you didn't see the setup, um, I have a video about that. Uh, just go look on my playlist. And um, I bought a pop-up greenhouse that I just got off of Amazon. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I like it a lot. I do not like the placement but that just kind of comes with lay, learning the lay of the land. But come on in and I'm gonna show you how I have it set up. And then today we're gonna start a few seeds. So this area right here is my uh, kind of planting table, my, I don't know, <laughs> potting bench type situation. Um, I just used a fold-out table that a friend of mine is letting me borrow and um, on here I've got a bin that I got at Ace Hardware for like four bucks. This has been the best investment in my entire life uh, when it comes to seed starting because then I can just have my soil there and then fill up my trays. These trays right here are um, landscape trays. They're, well not landscape trays, they're um, greenhouse trays. They're called 1801s. Um, this is just plastic um, containers that I've reused over the years. I'm on year three on a lot of these. This is a tray that came with it. Um, those of you who don't know, I used to work for Ace Hardware and I was the plant lady there and I absolutely loved my job, but I couldn't stand the idea of knowing that these guys were going in the trash. And so I took them and I brought them home and I have been using them as my seed starters for a very long time. I like these. These are actually 1501s, but anyway, that doesn't matter. But I like these ones because they are larger and I start the seeds in here. I multi-sow in these larger ones and then I up pot them into a singular situation that I'll show you in just a minute. But um, I, all recycled materials. I, I don't, I try not to buy anything if I don't have to, not because I don't want to, but because I have these available to me. And most of the time, if you go to any kind of mom or pop place that sells plants or anything like that, and you ask them if um, they can put a bin up for people to bring back their pots after they've bought the flats, um, th they will. And so you'll just get them for free and you can reuse that resource and you don't have to put it into the landfill. And that's really important to me. Um, so essentially my seed starting table is nothing fancy. Um, it's just a fold out table. This is a chair that I stole from my son's room. <laughs> because we don't have it all set up yet. And so that's what that is right there. And then over here on this side are, um, watch out shorty. These are just metal racks that my husband and I got, I think from Home Depot for $60 a piece. Uh, and we use these a lot in our home for storage. I use them, I originally bought them as a pantry in our old house but um, they are, work great for seed starting racks because in this greenhouse, it's really bright and it's in a bright situation. So I don't have to have grow lights on here and um, the natural light that's infused by the plastic actually takes care of that. So it eliminates the, the need to have a lot of seed starting supplies. Um, and I live in Georgia, I'm zone 7B, 8A with the new zone change. They say that I'm 8A now, but because I know Georgia and I know it's weather and she a little bipolar. So I tend to err on the side of 7B still. And I use, which zones don't really mean anything except for is all the common frost states and so it's really not that big of a deal if you don't know what I'm talking about there. Don't worry about it. 
Um, but anyway, I tend to be, uh, go into that. I say that <laughs> because uh, we are warm. We don't get really cold here. I haven't had, but maybe six or eight. I'll have to go back on that and see, or you guys can Google it. But we've only had a few nights where it's dropped below freezing this entire winter time for an extended amount of time. So starting my seeds out here is completely feasible because the inside of this greenhouse stays warm enough to where the freeze doesn't touch it. Now my house plants don't like it out here. I had to move those inside because uh, the temperature is not regulated. It doesn't stay a certain amount of time or a certain temperature. Like to, today I am standing inside of here the it's 50 degrees outside today and I'm it's hot in here like I'm, I'm gonna go and eventually get me a um, thermometer to put in here but I just haven't done that yet just because I haven't got out yet much but um, anyway so I have these and so what I do is I'll put my transplants over here and then I like it because I have again these these which are recycled uh, landscape flats like seed starting flats that they use at the greenhouses and things like that I have a ton of these I keep these I love these um, and then as they age yeah I think I'm on probably year five on some of these right here and as they age out I just try to recycle them um, but I can always get more with the resources available to me so i again i try not to invest a lot of money in the seed starting because where i live seed starting isn't a long extended process so you want to get your things started you know it's february like i said it's february 6th and so usually i focus on whatever flowers i need to start and the tomatoes and peppers there you go. thank you Oh, okay. Jackson brought me some lunch because I won't eat otherwise because I'm so excited. Thank you, Bubba. You're um, so anyway, that's just kind of a breakdown of this situation over here. And then this right here, this tray right here, I don't know how well you can see it. So that tray right there is a self-watering wicking tray. And I did invest in that uh, about two years ago, maybe three now, I don't know. Uh, but it was $50 for that tray. And it was so that I could take and use it as a, a seeds, a germination tray. I use it to germinate my seeds. And then once they germinate and come out of it, I'll transfer them over to these racks. That's generally my system. So, um, I guess that's all. I haven't really organized it so, you know, it's completely functional because I'm trying to feel my way around it. But so far, I'm loving it. I do like how well this greenhouse insulates. It is extremely warm in here. I have the door open right here. And like I said, it's like, of course hour 50 is kind of warm you know like but it's 50 degrees out there today in here is quite warm um i am curious i'm gonna see if maybe rick will stop by and give me a thermometer to go in here today matter of fact i think i'm gonna go ahead and put my hair up because it is hot in here so that is good news because um when you start seeds We'll just go ahead and go into the video now that I've done that little review. Uh, when you start seeds, the most important thing about seed starting to know is, number one, God created the seed to grow. All right. So all you have to do is put your seed in the environment to where it can grow the best. Huh? That's it. That's all you have to do. There we go. I'm done. <laughs> The video is done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so when you understand the conditions that the seed needs to be in in order to germinate and in order to grow, once you have that bit of information, you don't have to worry about it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and set up and get our seed starting uh, situation going on here. And then we're going to discuss a little tool that I found that I'm going to share with you guys. Okay, so the things that you need to get started with seed starting is soil, which you want a fine grit soil. You don't want any kind of, see this right here? You don't want any kind of large pieces of bark or organic matter or anything in there only because uh, once the seed germinates and if it hits that piece of bark then it will just stall and not germinate anymore um, i use i invest in a good soil a good potting soil for me to start my seeds because i don't necessarily love the idea of seed starting soil because there's no nutrients in there and it allows um, it requires to immediately up pot or immediately start fertilizing for that. And that just takes up a lot of brain power for me. But um, so I tend to put a lot of work in the front end so that I don't have to maintain as closely as you would with other processes. So I use, this is me, I use a high quality topsoil that I have sifted, um, which I use this right here um one of my i love this thing right here so much one of my co-workers his name was reed uh and he worked with me at ace and he was the sweetest man i've ever met well a lot of the guys that are at ace are the sweetest but it's like a special breed of wonderful there but anyway his wife was a master gardener and she had passed away and so he gave me a lot of her gardening supplies and this little grid it's just a small I don't know like a one by two just a little one by two right here frame and then this is rabbit wire like the welded rabbit wire and you just put your soil there and you just shake it and it sits out all the big bits and that's what I do so I just set this over it and I put my top my potting mix in here and so the smaller bits fall down in my tub and then the larger bits I just put back in the bag because I'm going to use it for up potting things like that because it's still good soil okay so anyway he gave me that and I just think it's the sweetest thing and he ended up passing away I think maybe l last year I'm not sure last year was kind of rough for me but um Anyway, he, he passed away and so now it's even more special to me and I have seeds and things that he gave me and I just think that's such a sweet legacy to, to pass forward things like gardening tools and seeds and just all of that. I just think it's beautiful and that's where his heart was and I hope to um, adapt those practices too because I admired that so much in him. So anyway, sad story. So I use a fine soil to start with. And then uh, what I do is I pre-moisten that soil so that whenever I can um, squeeze it, there's no water coming out of it. There's no water dripping and it holds its form. It's a little bit dry right now, but I'm just kind of giving you the expectations. See that? That's what you want. Okay, and the reason why I pre-moisten my soil is so that as soon as the seed comes into contact with that, uh, boy, you cannot have my sandwich. Austin's trying to get my sandwich. <laughs> Austin, what you trying to do, sir? <laughs> and then there's Shorty. Shorty's like, hey, I'm here. Anyway, that's my life. So, you... When the seed comes into contact with that soil, it immediately starts sending, you know, triggers to the seed to start germinating. And um, it doesn't, the pre-moistened soil doesn't have any dry spots in it because it's all the same moisture level all the way across. And so whenever I go to water it, cause I bottom water, I try to bottom water the most, uh, but when I can spritz it on top, then I, I am confident that the water level is going to stay consistent and the the little germ, the little tail of the seed doesn't come into contact with something that can immediately, or dryness, and it'll immediately stall the germination rate. So it kind of gives it a little leg up 
and a way to be able to um, start its life in the best way possible. Okay, now um, that's our seed starting. There's really nothing else to it. You don't have to do any kind of special nothing. You don't really need to invest in a whole lot of special nothing because like I said before, God created the seed to do its job, right? And all we as gardeners and stewards need to do is just set it up for the position to grow. That's all we have to do. In order to grow a seed, you put the seed in the soil, you sow it um, as deep as it, hold on, What's, I can never say this correctly. You wanna sow it as twice as deep as the seed is wide. Huh? Twice as deep as the seed is wide, okay? So that's just a little tidbit of information there. Now, what kind of seeds do you start and when? That is all dependent on where you live. It's all dependent on what you like. It's all de the answer that I usually tell people about what seeds to grow when is figure out what you want to grow, period. Like all year long. Like, oh, I really like rutabagas. I'm gonna, I wanna grow rutabagas. Oh, I really like carrots. I wanna grow carrots. Oh, I really like tomatoes. Um, I really like peppers. I love onions, those types of things. Once you figure out what you want to grow, then you use a resource available that um, I really love, and it's two of them, actually. I have the Farmer, Farmer's Almanac. They, it's an incredible resource. They are super organized. They have all these growing guides on the website, and they, um, they give you tips on like planting by the moon and planting you know, seasonally and doing all the things that, you know, are to me fun, you know, different types of ways. So I really like the Farmer's Almanac, but the thing that I like most about it is they're extremely practical. There's not any bells and whistles. There's not any kind of confusing information. There's charts. I love charts. Um, the, and it's just a simple broke down process for me. I could not access the Farmer's Almanac website today for some reason it said that the website was down I tried from my phone I tried from my laptop um, and so I was confident that it was not me as being a terrible techie person uh, but the second resource that I like is the UGA um, what you, the University of Georgia extension agent that's what I'm trying to think of um, I am a master gardener. I don't participate in the program because I don't um, volunteer the hours or anything like that. But I did go through the study and I really love the way that uh, UGA set up the master gardener program. And I'm sure it's like that with any state that you're in. But the UGA extension website has this, which I don't know if it's backwards to you or not. Um, but it's the vegetable planting chart. Okay, I just played that back to make sure it wasn't backwards to you. But this is a really, really great resource. It took me two seconds to print it out. And um, on here, it has the different columns. You have the vegetable that you wanna grow. And so you can look down through here, the days to maturity, the different kinds of varieties, which if you're anything like me, there's a bazillion out there and you're gonna buy all the seeds. And then when you can plant it in the spring, when you can plant it in the fall, how many seeds per 100 feet, which um, if you kind of want to get into that, we'll get into that another day. Just comment below if you're interested in that information because there's this is, this is a little bit outdated, uh, but that's okay because they're doing um, ag spacing, like mass ag spacing. And, on, and as a backyard gardener, I don't use that information. Um, and then the depth to plant. I, these last three columns, I don't really pay attention to because again, that is all about spacing and it's all about, um, mass ag um, practices, which is great. If you're doing mass ag, that's fine, but I am not, I'm doing backyard. Um, and then the planting depth, that's a lot of math and that's a lot of stuff to remember. So I just strictly go across the board. It doesn't matter what it is. I plant, um, the depth as twice as wide as the seed is big okay and so that's really just the 
fundamentals, that's it. So this chart, which I'm giving you this resource, and if I figure out how to do it, I'll link it down below. Um, but if I don't figure it out, sorry, love y'all, but it is the UGA website and the extension. I mean, Lord have mercy. Farmer's Almanac and then the UGA of resources. A lot of extension agencies have this type of resource up and I just use UGA because that's what I'm familiar with because I went through the Master Gardener program. But most states in the United States have a, an extension agency and I'm pretty sure all the states, I'm not sure. And they uh, will have this type of resource for your zone and for your um, uh, environment there. but. So what I do, because I like paper, I'm not a big fan of using apps or anything like that because if, you know, if my phone dies while I'm out in the garden, then what am I gonna do? You know, oh, I have no idea. So I always print mine out and I have a binder and I keep it um, in my office, in my house. But what I do for seed starting and to kind of organize myself, because I am type A, which a lot of people are surprised about, but I am type A, is I will go through this column because we're in february so this is the spring right and so i highlight here see what i did there okay and then because it's february what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through here and highlight all of the february indicators and see just real quick with you guys here with me there's a february okay so, I think that's all on this page. It's two pages right here if you want to do that. But um, just for today, I'm going to do the one page for you guys. So, the first thing that I noticed is that it says beets. So, I can highlight beets February 15th through April 1st. Well, um, I don't, I plan on growing beets this year. And so I'm going to experiment with beets. I've never done it before. So I'm going to use this as an approximate date, meaning I'm going to, you can plant beets anywhere between February 15th and April 1st. Okay. Can you see that? And I love that. I absolutely love that so much because I'm going to start some beets. There's, for example, I'm, going to get, I'm trying not to overload your brain here, but a couple of different techniques. There's like a multi sowing where you just put beets pretty heavily and you can use that for beet greens. There is the, um, what is that dude's name? Charles Dowding, Charles Downing, Dowding. He does a multi sowing where it's like three beets and then he leaves them that way and then they grow, so, you know, clumped like that. And apparently, so, apparently um, it gives them stability that they can thrive better on that. I have tried to grow Greek beets like almost every year and I cannot get them to grow. And so this year I'm actually going to start them inside. So I'm going to go ahead and put those beets in my seed starting pile because I need to experiment and have some some answered questions before I get ready to put them out in my garden. And I made sure to get enough beets to where I can sacrifice a couple of sowings because it is a learning experience. So there's that. Okay. The second thing that I noticed that I can start seeds in February is broccoli. It says February 15th to March 15th. Okay. And so I'll go ahead and pull those seeds out and start those now. This one says February 1st through March 15th, and it is collards. Y'all, we like collards down here in the south. Okay, and so I'll go ahead and pull those out. This chart says the next thing in... I'm going cross out here. The next thing is kale. All right. And you see that? Okay. So, um, that is a general way that I use this for starting seeds. Okay, I'm going to put a little caveat here. I'm going to put a little, and here's an extra tip. All right, 
the on this chart this is why I, I say use these charts as a guideline and not as a cemented resource because on here it says where did I see it oh eggplant it says to start eggplants April 1st through May 15th this right here is the planting date you see that planting date that is not a seed starting date okay that's when you want to put them in the ground or you know have a transplant ready or something like that but I use this as a guideline okay so the best thing for you to do and you can have this as a resource but I only have echinacea right here beside me but let's pretend this is eggplant. It says um, on your seed packet, your seed packet has a lot of information on it. Okay, it has this over here. This is the type of plant. This is your variety of plant. And on the back, it has all of this information, all your um, seed starting information. You can actually cut this out, which I don't, but you can cut this out and use this as a um, marker. On the botanical interest packets you can actually open these up and they have a whole bunch of information on the inside to read i highly encourage you to practice reading your seed packets because they are all different and they all offer a, a lot of different information per company meaning this is super in-depth but i also have the same variety from livingston that's not as in-depth Okay, and I mean, they have the same growing conditions because that's what this plant requires, but there's more information here. And I, I, the seed packet is gonna be your first information resource because it's going to tell you when to sow inside and when, or if you have botanical interest, when to sow outside and when to sow inside. And it'll tell you the recommended way to do this. Again, I'm not trying to overload your information. So if you have any questions, please comment them below and I will make sure to further my information on that. But I'm kind of going fast here because I want to give you encouragement to play in the dirt. Okay, so this one says that it's echinacea. So, outside two to four weeks before your average last frost date okay our average frost date they're saying now is march 24th which it used to be april 12th but that so that's like a a big gap there um but i want my plants to be super established before i put them out so i tend to um start inside 10 to 12 weeks which is what it says here see that Okay, so 10 to 12 weeks before your average last frost date. Right now, we are nine weeks um, before. I've already sown a couple of these. I'm gonna go ahead and sow another wave of them because I really want these in my garden. Um, and so I'm just trying to up that. But the moral of this whole tangent is to read your seed packets and familiarize yourself with what it tells you to do as far as when to sow them indoors okay because there's a big gap there to sow outside is two to four weeks before your average frost date to sow inside is 10 to 12 so that's quite a bit of time for it to be backed up to start your seeds inside again I tell you all that information to let you know that not one person can tell you what seeds to start in February or March or April because we do not know everything that you want to plant and what your plans are for that plant. So the best thing you can do is equip yourself with the information per seed. And that just simply means to understand what it is that you want to grow for the year. I want to grow a very, very large garden this year. So I'm going to be starting as many seeds as I possibly can. Um, indoors so that I can one share them and so th I say indoors but I mean here in the greenhouse um, but I want to be able to share them and gift them to others but I also want to be able to have 
secession sewing uh, and waves in case the learning curve of this new space becomes very steep. So I wanna make sure that I have plants available to me because plants are expensive. Starting seeds are is the most economical way to have as many plants as you want because you can go to a big box store, which shall not be named right now, and pay for one cabbage plant five to seven dollars when one cabbage plant equals one cabbage and you can go to the grocery store and get an organic cabbage for five to seven dollars. I don't know really. I don't I don't know how much it is now because it's nuts out there, but like it's just not economically smart to be able to to go and pay that much money for one plant. But you can get a pack of cabbage seeds and pay two ninety nine to you know, I think the most expensive cabbage pack of cabbage patch, cabbage pack I wanted to buy was like four bucks or something like that. And it's a specialty cabbage. Um, and so it's just, it's a lot more economical to start them from seed. What I'm trying to say here is that when you're looking at the overall cost of a garden and when you're look looking at the varieties and things that you want to grow in your garden, especially the availability that is in your grocery store and in the market, um, starting seeds is the most rewarding and the best way to get the varieties and the things that you want in your garden without paying a lot of money. And, and grabbed a seed pack of cabbage. This company is Baker Creek. I really like this company. They're an heirloom seed company. Um, but this tends to be more of the higher end uh, cabbage company because they're heirloom and because they do a lot of intentional things with their seeds and to harvest their seeds. They partner with, um, what do you call it? Like they partner with farmer owned farms. I don't know how to say that, but sustainable farms all over the world. And then they bring in different varieties for us that are heirlooms. Heirloom simply means that is over 25 years old um, and that it's been around for a long time. Okay. I am a sucker for heirlooms, not for production, but for the story and for the joy of experiencing growing new things. Um, but anyway, tangent. This is a cabbage, okay? On this cabbage, it's a heading cabbage. So this is one seed will equal one head of cabbage. All right, I went and got this because I don't know how well you can see that right here. But in this one seed packet, it has a minimum of 300 seeds for $3. That means that I paid, you know, whatever that math is, 10 cents a seed. Yeah, I'm just going to let that lay there. Okay, so um, the, for me to go and to buy a plant at a big box store and pay $5 for one head of cabbage is completely crazy. Like, it's just, it just blows my mind to think about because I can put these seeds in the ground. I can direct sow them where I live. I can start them here, and then I can have succession plants going on throughout the season for less than I would pay for a, an organic cabbage at the grocery store. Okay. But let's go back to the seed package. So I'm growing. So I hope that encourages you to just go ahead and get you some seeds. Um, and if not, you can go to, if you can't afford to buy seeds, which I was there for a very long time, I would just talk to my friends and people who are also in the garden community and we just shared seeds or, or like me and several of my friends this year are going in on seed purchasing because this is $3. I mean, a lot of times you don't have $3 just to spend on one variety of one plant that you know that you need several of. So we are all, excuse me, going in together. And a lot of these starts that I have right here are where my friends have come over and we have started seeds together and shared our seed packets. And I'm just gonna care for them because I have the resources available right now. And we tag teamed that. So please keep that in mind. You do, gardeners are not meant to garden alone, 
I fully 100% believe that. So anyway, what I want to tell you about the seed packet is, uh, let's turn it this way. Can you see that? So right here, it says the seed will sprout seven to 10 days. The ideal temperature for the seed to sprout is 50 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that's how warm the soil needs to be. In here, I do not have any um, heat mats going because it stays warm enough in this greenhouse for the ambient temperature to keep the seed, no, the soil warm enough for our cool weather crops to germinate. Um, and so anyway, so there's the soil temperature. You put it about a quarter inch deep, which is twice as wide it is big. And then the plant spacing is null and void. Frost hardy means that it can get cold, it's okay. And then um, it needs about six to 12 hours of sun. There's your information right there. So I know that to grow cabbage, that I need to make sure that they will grow in my greenhouse because the soil stays above 50 degrees. I know that they will um, sprout in about seven to 10 days. So um, if it's been, you know, Cindy, Cindy and I planted last Thursday, which is about five days now, um, and there has been no activity in my little seed starts right there. And it's okay because I know about seven to 10 days is when I need to be looking for that. It's on the seed packet. The seed packet tells me. Okay, so just kind of figure out, and different varieties will have different conditions because they're, they're like us, you know, I'm not the same as my friend Cindy, she's tall, I'm short, and that's okay, <laughs> you know, she's blonde, I'm not, well, I think she's blonde, yeah, she's blonde, she's gorgeous, it doesn't matter, so, but she, um, she's different, and I'm different, so my conditions to thrive are different than her conditions to thrive, and then it's the very same way per each variety, which is not overwhelming for you. Uh, don't let that be overwhelming for you. Just inform yourself. Inform yourself on what it is that you want to grow for to feed your family or even to just start. And then just focus on that season for now. You know. Okay, so now that we've covered all of that other information, let's talk about the different varieties that I'm actually going to start today. Um, so the other one I forgot was Tomatillo. Tomatillo, Tomatillo, how do you say that? Anyway, I'm pretty excited about this. I have started watching a chick on YouTube, uh, Acre Homestead, and she does a lot of cooking stuff, and she in inspired me to be a little brave with coming, uh, with preserving my food, and so I am going to grow more things that I want instead of buying them at the grocery store. So one of the things that I'm gonna start today, well, we're gonna start the cabbage, okay? Is the this tomatillo verde, the purple, cobain, and then the this purple, which this one's open already, okay? And then I'm going to go to my tomatoes and I'm really excited about this. So with the supplier that I usually get my plant starts from uh, Ace at Ace, he sold his greenhouse this year and I'm not even gonna lie, I am in great mourning of that uh, because he had such great starts and, and they only charged 99 cents per start. And so it was feasible for me to be able to have some little babies that I started and some that I bought as transplants and it just kind of helped with that. But one of the, the ones that he grew was, oh, I just organized it out of order, was this one called the Mortgage Lifter, which is an heirloom variety that's supposed to be super high productive, Hi highly productive. I don't know. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to grow that. I'm going to grow a Lincoln. I'm gonna grow Heinz. I'm gonna start Gladiator. And this is a cherry tomato called Sweetie. I'm gonna start that. Uh, I'm gonna do one round of Romas. And then this just says large red. I'm not really sure of what type of variety it was, 
But when I ordered from Southern Seed Exposure, which is a great company, um, they, it just said large red, but these did really well for me. So I'm gonna try that again. I've got Glacier that I'm gonna try. The, nope, not yet. Uh, Paul Robeson, another YouTuber that I follow is Jess at Roots and Refs, Roots and Refuge. And she loves this tomato. And so I thought I'd be brave. I'm actually not a tomato fan of fresh tomatoes, but I do like tomato things like sauce. And you know, my family loves spaghetti sauce and I'm a huge fan of anything Mexican. So, you know, like salsa and any of that. So I found this this year. This is new to me, the Amish paste. Um, so I'm going to try that. I've got this one, which is really pretty. I'm going to try. My friend Bryce gave me these orange accordions and I have tried for, I think there's a few seeds left in here. I tried two years ago and didn't get anything. And I think that was hundred percent my mess up. Last year I grew them and we ended up selling my house, <laughs> our old homestead before the guy, these were fully ripe. And so I've yet to try these, um, but I was very excited to bless them forward so that the people who moved in, they had these and they're so fun and so pretty. So I'm really excited about that. That's from my friend Bryce. He's an absolute sweetheart. He's young. Well, he's in love now. He's old enough. Um, I think they're getting married. I think they're getting, anyway, uh, he's one of my babies. I consider him a baby. So I've got black cherry, which is my family's favorite snacking tomato. It's a cherry tomato and um, it's, it's purpley color, but I cannot keep these on the vine. So I'm actually gonna start the entire pack here so that I have multiple of them because I would like to preserve it to where um, I can make a sauce out of it. Like I saw this viral TikTok um, video which is, I don't have TikTok, but it's where they do the cherry tomatoes and then the basil and the mozzarella and then they stick in the oven with some orzo and then it turns into like a situation. Or maybe there's like, I don't know, some kind of seed. I mean, some kind of melty cheese in there and it's just, it just looks amazing. So I want to try that. I think I already did an Abe Lincoln. Yep. Okay, so that one's going back. Uh, I got this this year, which is the Berkeley tie-dye. Isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I'm really excited about that because I want to have beauty in my garden. If I'm going to work this hard, I want to be excited about what I'm growing. This white tomato was a free seed. If you order from Baker Creek, they give you, you know, you spend a certain amount of money and they give you free shipping and then they give you free seeds, which I think is awesome because, hey, gardeners don't like to garden by themselves and then I got this one which was a really good um, I'm gonna call it a salad tomato I'm not really sure what it's categorized as but it says classic cherry flavor that has been largely lost over the years and so I'm really excited about doing um, recipes with that as well and then this is Sunrise Bumblebee, which became pretty popular a couple of years ago when heirlooms became kind of like the gardener trend just to go and do fun heirlooms. Uh, and my daughter really likes these. And I do not have seeds to sun gold, but I hope to get a sun gold tomato. So I'm actually going to be growing all of these different types of tomatoes this year. And I am... Um, going to be starting them today with you doing the multi sow technique and so what I'm gonna do is just for this video I have all of these seeds that I'm starting today but for the sake of this video and how long it already is I'm just gonna kind of fly through the rest of it and I'm just gonna show you my um, technique but <clears throat> what I like to do when I'm sowing tomatoes, it's tomatoes, peppers, and um, well, I don't, I didn't bring out ground cherries, but that's that is I'll get my little container and I fill up one situation with soil and then I'll put a bunch of seeds in this one situation. And so this entire 
thing. I thought I thought it was already open and I thought I would mess it up. Okay. So this one thing will have every one of these seeds in it until I have, you know, 30 seeds germinate in this one situation because tomatoes are really easy to separate from the soil uh, as they grow. So this keeps my seed starting space down to a minimum and I can use it all my space wisely but it also go aheads and give go aheads go ahead I don't know y'all but it gives it a chance to germinate and and come up so that I have the time schedule that I need for them to go and then I'll know how many actually germinated and then I can separate them into individual pots like I did my peppers over here and whatever I have left that I'm not going to put in my garden I can gift forward okay and I do that so that I can cycle through my seeds and so that I can have guaranteed that I'm gonna have enough plants to produce enough tomatoes to be able to put up for my family. Because my goal in starting this garden is one, it's gonna be 2,800 square feet, which is massive. It's like the same size as my house. And two, it's going to um, uh, hopefully prayerfully feed a lot of people because my heart is to grow so much food that the abundance takes care of the people in my community who wouldn't usually be able to afford organic food so all right so I'm going to kind of put you on a time lapse and I'm going to show you what I do and just let you kind of see the process All right, so now after I've filled up the soil, which I tend to kind of not pack in there because you want to have air circulate through your soil, but um, I tend to fill it up pretty full because I'm multi-sowing and there's going to be a lot of seeds in there. Okay, so then I'll take and I'll go through my seed packets and I'll get my handy dandy label maker. Uh, I got this at Walmart and it was like 39 bucks or something like that and i really like this one because the label making tape is plastic so it has uh it's waterproof and so what i do is i will go on each container and i'll take my stack of seeds right here and i'll just whatever one's on top uh it'll be a tomato glacier and i'll make a label and today's date. So today is the 6th. And usually if it's a, like I can look at a tomato and tell it's a tomato, but for the sake of identifying, I generally put T period and then the variety. So it'll be T period, this one, <coughs> excuse me. This one is Glacier. And then I push enter so that it's two rows and print. The only thing I don't like about this particular label maker, and it drives me absolutely insane, is you see how much waste there is there? It drives me, it drives me crazy. So, because I am frugal, I keep that clear part, put it in a pile, and then when I run out of label making tape, I use Sharpies on that. So, this has dual, two sides on the back, the sticker, and so what I'll do is I'll pull the sticker off the bottom part, put it on the seed starter tray, see that? And that way, the top part still has the adhesive blocker thing on there 
So whenever I go to transfer it into the next step up, which would be the 1801 trays, I could just take that one label and label the entire tray and I'll know that that entire tray is glacier tomatoes. So I'm kind of using one resource multiple different times. And then if I have sense enough about me and it's about a 50-50 shot, uh, I'll actually take the same label and put it on my little plastic, uh, I've had these for years, so you can tell, little plant markers and they show up and they last forever. And I don't have to worry about my labels fading. I don't have to worry about you know the plant markers versus the sharpie by the way sharpies do not work in the garden neither do popsicle sticks but um the so this is just a, an extra little type a step that i take so that i can identify easily and then what i do is i take my little seed packet sometimes i'll have seed packets inside the seed packet which just keeps them their mylar so it keeps them from being exposed to sunlight and then I'll take this entire pack. Again, I'm only planting the entire pack because of my goals for the garden. You don't have to do that, but this is a tomato seed. Can you see that? And so I'll take and spread all of these tomato seeds on top of the soil. I don't know if you can see them, the little babies. And then I will take my little boop stick. I found this feather. Actually, I don't even know where it came from. I don't even know what kind of feather it is, but I found it. And I'll take and just kind of boop the seeds just a smidgen into the soil so that they're covered. And then I lightly brush my fingers across to make sure all of them are covered in soil. When you plant a seed, you plant it only as deep as as it is wide, double. Like, so do, I'm gonna figure out that terminology a lot better. But anyway, so there you go. So they're, they're labeled here and then they're planted there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish this tray out and I'm gonna show you what I do at the end. Now that they are done and labeled, I'm going to place them on this seed starting tray and I'm gonna water them in and leave them there. transferring it from this watering jug to this one is because this one has a spout on it this one does not and I don't want a whole bunch of water shifting my seeds around so this loosens up the water so right now I'm just watering in the seeds so that they are wet and I'm bringing all of the soil moisture to the same level throughout the entire thing. So I'm gently watering in the seed. I'm gonna have to gently water these guys too. I'll grab the And then we're done. So the main
main thing to remember with seed starting in any way is that God created the soil. Uh, well, he did. God created the seed to germinate and to grow. So don't stress about that part. Just remember to put the seed in the best possible environment so that it can grow. And in order to do that, just research what type of conditions that your seed will grow in. Okay, make sure that your soil does not dry out. The second it dries out, um, it, it could potentially cause the seed to shock and then it won't germinate or and then it will have already went through a little bit of the germination process pause and then you've lost that seed so just the main thing is is make sure in order to germinate the seeds make sure the soil stays moist the entire time once the seeds come up and they are considered seedlings that's when you want to provide the light and that's when you want to make sure that they stay uh, exposed to you know natural sunlight and things like that and then when it starts turning from a seedling once you get your true leaves which are the first two leaves you want to start using a liquid fertilizer I use this which is um, fish fertilizer and it's just really great it doesn't burn it's for organic gardening it's omri listed that type of thing this is the only fertilizer that i use the only liquid fertilizer that i use uh, and i from this point on i will use fertilizer every time i water once it's a seedling and that's just so that there's consistent nutrients in t in the soil because this is you know a little bitty tiny situation and that's all the nutrients it has and if I don't feed it it doesn't have the the availability like it would in the ground to be able to seek out its own nutrients so that's it that's all you do um, it's not a lot of people will overthink it I overthought it for a very long time and then I realized that you know God's been doing this for since the beginning of creation and if I can mimic the conditions that God has created already, then, you know, the hard work's done. So I just think about what it is that they need, and then I try to give it to them. They do not need all these fancy lights. They do not need to have, you know, these things. You just, for me, I mean, I have a fan in here because it's hot, <laughs> okay? The air, if it's warm enough outside, I open up my greenhouse completely so that the air is in here um, exposing them. Most of the time, I do not have to harden off my seedlings because they've already been so exposed to the environment because of how lax I am, to be honest. Uh, the only thing I would say is make sure that your soil doesn't dry out and it stays moist and come in here love on them pray over them enjoy it be excited and just be brave be brave plant the seed and let me know if you guys have any questions if you enjoyed this video please hit the like and subscribe button uh, also hit the notification bell so that you will get notified about new um, videos and because they're not consistent uh, but I try to do videos whenever I can and I'm feeling healthy enough to do them lots of videos are coming because now is the time to really be focusing on starting and I want to be able to give you guys a upfront view of my garden and how uh, our family is starting from literal scratch and so this is part of it so we're getting started with our seedlings we this I started these guys in in december 30th because these i went to the grocery store and i had to buy bell peppers and this was a temper tantrum I'm not even gonna lie i had to buy bell peppers and i paid like eight bucks for three three peppers and i was like no so i planted these these are um well this is a nardello but uh, it's a sweet pepper but the, i planted these to make sure that i had plenty of pepper plants because if the lord god almighty will help me i will not pay for a single pepper
for the rest of my life. I'm just not here for the price of that. So anyway, I went ahead and started these early, but it's because I wanted to make sure that I had these going because I realized last year I didn't have a single bell pepper in my garden. What was up with that? So anyway, thank you for all that y'all um, are doing. Thank you for spending your time here with me. And if you have like, any questions, like I said, just comment below. Comment anyway so that I know that you're here. Uh, so, Because part of my heart is to be able to develop a community to where we can each walk together throughout our gardening journeys. And that um, what advice I can offer, the comment section is an incredible resource that I have found on YouTube. And I just feel like the more that we comment and the more that we connect, the uh, broader our information bank gets. And that's important, you know, because we can have information all the live long day but if it doesn't apply to our situation it means nothing right so y'all have a blessed day thank you again for hanging out and i'll see you again soon